I want to start by uh, acknowledging my good dear friend Joe Massarello. When I came in 2004, Joe had the office too along for me, I think, and Joe was always at work, always a, a, an incredible colleague, a, a, an inc one of the nicest human beings on the planet that you could ever wish to work with. And Joe does an awful lot of work to propel and advance the Drucker legacy. As dean, when I go around the world and, and people ask me what books of Drucker should I read, I start with the practice of management 1954. I go on to the effect of executive, which is having its 50th birthday this year. But then I quickly transition to Joe's books. Joe wrote The Daily Drucker, and that was the first book I got in 2004 when you... Um, when I joined, and in fact, someone asked me once, to be a successful professor, do you get interviewed and you have to know a lot of Drucker quotes? And, and, and when we read Drucker, Daily Drucker, of course, we get access to many quotes. And then one, a, a great gift that Joe gave me was the manuscript of The Lost Art of Management. You gave it to me in 2009, and I used it in 2010 to redesign the curriculum. In that book, Joe was the first person who actually explained what management as a liberal art is. And for the longest time, we would say, we are a liberal arts college and we practice management as a liberal art, but we actually didn't really know what we were talking about. And, and Joe wrote the book that guided a lot of the curriculum redesign. And more recently, Joe has written a book called The a Year with Peter Drucker. And actually, Joe, I, I'm a great purchaser of that book. I, have, I buy six at a time, and I actually give them out as gifts to people who want to know about Peter Drucker. I want to pass the floor now to Jean Lippman Blumen, one of our great dear colleagues, to speak on behalf of faculty. First, I'd like to say welcome to all Drucker alums who are here today, and also to prospective students. And I can't resist a particular welcome to my own former students who have all come up to hug me. So thank you all. I appreciate it. I am both delighted and truly honored to be asked to present this Lifetime Achievement Award to Joseph Masciarello, Emeritus Marie Rankin Clark Professor of Social Science and Management at the Peter Drucker Masatoshi Ito, Ito Graduate School of Management and Director of Research of the Drucker Academy in Hong Kong. I'm also so happy to welcome his incredible wife, Judy, the Joe and Joe and Judy's son, Patrick, and his wife, Eliza, their daughters, Callie and Reese, as well as Joe and Judy's younger son, Joe, or Joey, as I always think of him, and his daughter, Grace, who have joined us today for this incredible ceremony, honoring Joe's astounding career and his contribution to the world. And a special welcome to all of your personal guests whom you invited here today. To set this context, the context for this award, let me make what I believe is an apt historical comparison. Some of you know I was an English major, so I couldn't resist this. In 1766, James Boswell, who was an aspiring lawyer and diarist, met Samuel Johnson, who by then was really a major figure in British literature. Boswell subsequently devoted his entire life to chronicling Johnson's life and literary contributions. But here is the interesting thing to me at least. Boswell's biography of Johnson, called The Life of Samuel Johnson, has been called by many the greatest biography ever written. That is the model that we see replicated in Joe's selfless devotion to Peter Drucker and Peter's astounding life's work. This dedication of one's own life to the explication and promulgation of another person's work for the benefit of future generations is a shining example of what psychologist Abraham Maslow called transcendence. 
Transcendence, you recall, became the apex of Maslow's revised hierarchy of needs. I'm always reminding my students it got revised. It's not self-actualization. <laughs> For Maslow, transcendence meant he actually had 35 definitions of transcendence, but the one I like best and the first one that he gives is self-forgetfulness. The millennials would probably say it means getting over yourself, okay? <laughs> and the devotion of one's efforts to a cause larger than oneself, to a cause that will benefit, even transform the world. Joe Masciarello was Peter Drucker's Boswell. He essentially set aside his own exemplary intellectual career, begun at NYU, to, to devote himself to what he selflessly saw as a larger mission, the explication and advancement of Peter Drucker's immense contribution to managerial thought and practice. But let me tell you a little bit about Joe's background. He completed his PhD in economics under the direct supervision of Professor William Bomall of Princeton and NYU and professors Oscar Morgenstern and Salomon Fabricant of NYU. Then he did his postdoctoral studies with Professor Robert Anthony of the Harvard Business School and with the 1973 Nobel laureate in economics, Wassily Leontiev of NYU. Prior to coming to the Drucker School and also Claremont McKenna College in 79, as a joint appointee. He taught at Union College in Schenectady, New York, and in one of their programs at Vassar Uni uh, College in Poughkeepsie for 13 years. While at Union, he consulted to many departments of the New York State Government in program management control systems. Uh, Professor Masciarello taught in the economics department at Claremont McKenna from 79, 1979 to 2000. Prior to his full-time dedication to Peter's work, Professor Masciarello taught, here are the things he taught for us at Drucker, benefit-cost analysis, financial accounting, cost management, and management control systems at the Drucker School, from which he retired officially in June of 2015, much to all of our regrets. So clearly, Joe had a full-fledged, impressive career, distinguished by at least four books and numerous articles, when he made a conscious, selfless decision to turn his full attention first to helping Peter update his monumental work, and later, after Peter's death in 2005, to expanding that impressive legacy at times in collaboration with Karen Linkletter. And Joe, I don't know if you remember this, and those of you who were here when, uh, when Peter was, was still with us, I oftentimes worried about and spoke about at faculty, meet, faculty meetings my concern that uh, what would happen, about what would happen when Peter was no longer teaching Drucker, because Peter taught Drucker, the rest of us did not, and I worried about what would happen. But Joe stepped into that, that role and has done it, as you all know, brilliantly. Uh, in addition to best-selling books and numerous articles on Drucker's work, he's developed the Peter Drucker curriculum that's used throughout the world. And if I were to stand here and enumerate the entire list of Drucker-focused publications authored or co-authored by Joe, we'd be here for the rest of the afternoon. No lunch, no break, nothing, okay? Let me just say that through his books and training of faculty members and executives around the world, Joe has spread and enhanced Peter's vision of a functioning society of organizations. That vision, at its core, includes individuals who derive 
both status and function from their organizational role and organizations that are led by executives with integrity who direct dynamic processes of continuity and change. For his efforts in advancing Peter's legacy, Joe has received worldwide recognition, including an honorary doctorate degree in 2016 from Leipzig Graduate School of Management in Germany. And now I would just like to say something about Joe's other special gifts to the, uh, to the Drucker Ito School. And now I'm talking about Judy. There are many gifts that Joe has given to the world, CGU and Drucker Ito. But I would be remiss indeed if I did not highlight another incredibly special gift that Joe's presence at CGU has brought us. And that is his amazing, brilliant, kind, and generous wife of 47 years, Judy Masiarello, whose life among us has enhanced us all. To Judy today, we say a special thank you and offer her the informal award of our immense love, uh, enduring gratitude, and respect. So Judy, would you just stand so everyone can. And uh, in the remaining time that I have, uh, I want to uh, read to you the testimonials of Joe's Drucker family. Um, and because I think that those of us who have worked with Joe for lo these many years, probably next to Judy and his biological uh, family, uh, we know him best. And first, I bring you greetings from Dick Ellsworth. Okay. Beloved friend and colleague to many of us. He is emeritus professor who unfortunately fractured his hip a short time ago and was unable to join us. But he sends his love, his best wishes, his congratulations, and his fondest memories of his friendship uh, with you over the years. Bernie Jaworski, whom you met earlier, said, Joe was always exceptionally generous with his time, helping me select the books for the great books class and actively participating on the session on social ecology. The students love and continue to love these stories about Peter and the application of this work to a variety of organizations. Hovig Chalian, assistant professor, professor of practice, whom you met a few minutes ago, said one of my fondest memories of Joe is sharing wonderful, wide-ranging lunchtime conversations with him and VJ, Professor Sape. The three of us would meet once a week after each drug a different session the last time he taught the course. And then VJ Sape, who is the Davidson Chair and Professor of Management, said, any professor would be pleased if, other, if others used one of the following phrases to describe his or her contributions. Insightful scholar, caring teacher, generous colleague. Having been Joe's colleague for over 30 years, I can safely say that all those phrases and many more similar accolades describe his memorable and monumental contributions at the Drucker School. Above all, Joe is an enormously kind and noble man who leaves everyone he touches better off than they were before they met him. And the last one I will read is from Jeremy Hunter, whom you met a few minutes ago, uh, who is Associate Professor of Practice and Founding Director of uh, the Executive Mind Leadership Institute. He said, I have many wonderful memories of Joe. He always gave generous amounts of time to help me explore ideas I was working on and how Peter's thoughts connected to them. He always encouraged me to go forward and reaffirm the value of what I was doing. However, the most powerful memories are sharing the experience of kidney transplantation 
and walking alongside me and my fears, relating his own experiences and how he faced them. Joe is one of the longest lived kidney transplant patients there is, and I regularly think of him as I go through my daily life. He has been a shining model of how to face life courageously, positively, and with a great quality of heart. I think that says it all. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, thank you all very much. Uh, I, uh, I'm still working. I, we have a lab down here, sort of. Peter, uh, I mean Philip, and Philip <laughs> works with me. Philip Pan and I. We've been working for two and a half years uh, to further uh, extend the uh, Drucker legacy. Uh, I'll just I'll, I'll just share the direction of that. Uh, uh, when I came to Claremont in 1979, I was full of systems. I was a systems uh, person, and I still am, uh, but uh, I can't change the way I'm made. But uh, in describing uh, what I do to, to Paul Albrecht, I was exuberant. He was the executive uh, uh, vice president at the time, uh, and he and Peter pretty much built the executive uh, management program here, here at Claremont. And, and when I ended this, uh, this uh, uh, discussion at the end of an interview, a second interview or third interview with Paul, he said, but management's about human beings, right? <laughs> and I said, right, uh, not knowing where this was going. And uh, then uh, I had the good fortune of working with the people at Lincoln Electric Company in uh, Cleveland. Uh, and uh, uh, I was uh, coming into one of my uh, final stages of that book, and I met with uh, Father Theodore Hesburgh, who was kind enough to meet with me a number of times, he was one of the great educational uh, executives of our, of our time, having uh, uh, built Notre Dame into the greatest Catholic university in the world. And, um, and I was describing to him the systems all about Lincoln Electric. And uh, he said, but don't forget the human being. Right. So uh, uh, Peter said management is a human activity. And as such, it has to be a liberal art. And that's my commitment. I'm thankful to this faculty uh, and, uh, and all of them. And I go by the school at least once a day. And I, I really hope and pray that the school flourishes. That's what Peter wanted. That's what I want. And uh, uh, so I thank you all. I know so many of you. I haven't seen you in so long. God bless you all that uh, you've been so kind to me. And uh, uh, as Jeremy said, I, I'm grateful to my doctors at UCLA, <laughs> to the grace of God, and to my wife, who have been very instrumental in, in, in my uh, health and, and, and well-being. So thank you so much, and uh, bless you all. Bye-bye. I've been blessed. Thank you, Jean, for those wonderful words, and thank you again, Joe, for all you've done for the Drucker School. We're now going to go for lunch. I've just got a couple of announcements before you uh, walk out. I look, I'm looking at the clock. It's half past 12. We will stick with one and a half hours for lunch, so we need to be back at two. Uh, we don't want to speed lunch up because a big part of today is to give you the chance to reconnect and meet old friends, and we have 400 people to feed, so we need to make sure we have enough time. There are just a couple of announcements I need to 
to make before we break. Uh, don't forget about the oral history project. We now have two ca cameras rolling. We have the camera that is in the uh, performance room, which is next door to here. And I believe Anthony is going to be outside at lunchtime also doing interviews as well. We have a photo booth. I have no idea where it is. Anyone know? <laughs> outside. I was told to tell you about the photo booth. <laughs> You'll find it. Someone will show you. Um, and, and we want you to take photos and share them on social media. The Drucker School is quite good at making ourselves look bigger and mightier than we really are. We, we, we create quite a lot of noise in the market. So you have a responsibility to take your photo and tell the world you're here at Drucker Day. Uh, we also have the tours of the game lab. And um, there are people outside that can help you take a tour of the game lab. But that's inside the Drucker building in the Burkle building, and this, as you've already caught a glimpse of using virtual reality and the gaming that the students are working on, it's way too cool. You've got to go over and have a look at that. And don't forget about our wonderful students, uh, both prospective and current students. They want to meet our alumni. They want to meet members of the community. It's a big deal for them to connect with people in industry who they aspire to. And so reach out to them and get to know them at lunchtime and make a point of going past the nine clubs that I believe are out at lunch as well and just get to know what they're doing, engage with, the, with them and offer your service. How can you help and how can you work with us? So enjoy the lunch. We have an hour and a half. Thank goodness the rain comes tomorrow. We've been watching the weather forecast all week. Uh, but enjoy lunch. Thank you very much.